Dave Palumbo here for an update and analysis of the Classic Physique Olympia. Now, guys, as you know, this was the first year they held the Classic Physique Olympia, and Classic Physique was kind of developed uh, by the IFBB and NPC to fit a gap that existed between men's open bodybuilding and men's physique. We needed a – I've been saying it for years, and uh, not just me but other people as well, that there was a – there was – uh, something that was missing. In other words, some of these men's physique guys had good physiques, but they weren't being appreciated on stage just by doing quarter turns. Uh, they wanted to do more. They wanted to pose on stage. They wanted to show their legs. But they didn't want to be as big as the open bodybuilders. So they created this division, which the bodybuilders were limited. Okay, Their weight, that is, was limited by how tall they were. So given your height, you can only weigh a certain amount. So it, it, it was designed to keep proportion in the physiques. Thus, the Classic Physique denomination. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be changing the name to Classic Bodybuilding next year. I heard that uh, as a rumor. I don't know if it's true or not. Anyway, so this year was the first year they had it. Darren Charles, uh, who was obviously has won pro shows in the men's open division, decided he was going to turn himself into a Classic Physique competitor. He did every single show, winning six times this past year in 2016. Uh, so he became the winningest Classic Physique guy out there. Uh, going into the Olympia, obviously, as one of the favorites. Uh, also going into the Olympia as one of the favorites was Arash Rabar, who beat Darren twice in Pittsburgh and at the New York Pro. Uh, Danny Hester went into the uh, Olympia, also is one of the guys to watch out for. He won the very first Classic Physique Pro Show in California back in, I think it was January. So there was a lot of guys in the lineup that had a lot of hype behind them. Sadiq Hodzovic who was second at the Olympia in men's physique last year, for, didn't compete the entire year, worked the whole year on putting size on, got a special invite amid some controversy. A lot of people felt they didn't deserve it. I thought it was, was well-deserved. He won the Arnold Classic in men's physique. He was second at the Olympia, absolutely deserved that special invite. Uh, so we, we hadn't seen him. We didn't know what to expect. Uh, two other guys that had a lot of hype behind them was uh, uh, Terrence Ruffin, uh, who a lot of people were talking about as being the next genetic freak shape uh, out there. And, of course, Breon Ansley, who I was, you know, I had seen pictures of. He won a couple of pro shows, and he was also super impressive. So going into the show, there was, a lot of, there was a lot of unknowns because we didn't know how the judges were going to score it, and I was excited to watch it. It was a shame that it was only in the expo and it wasn't up on the main stage. The controversy came with, number one, with the win. Uh, Danny Hester emerged victorious. Okay, after, you know, uh, he's been competing for like four decades, this guy. Uh, I remember when he was the EAS poster boy, you know, when Bill Phillips owned the company back then. Uh, he just recently got his pro card, you know, and uh, it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. He's a really good guy, known for many, many years. Uh, he's a good representative. He was a classic bodybuilder back when they didn't have a denomination for classic bodybuilding. He always looked classic on stage. He always had great shape. His problem was he had trouble getting his glutes shredded, which is perfect for this division because you don't see glutes. They're covered with those uh, short shorts, speedo-type shorts that these guys wear. Now, if you notice, some of the guys wore wet-lookish looking uh, suit, uh, or as you could say, I guess you could say, I don't know, they're not really board shorts. They're tight speedo-type shorts, so not even speedos. They're kind of like spandexy shorts. Some guys wear the uh, the kind of dullish look, as I call it. I like the wet look that Darren Charles wears. I, I think, I believe... Terrence Ruffin was wearing the, ref, the wet look, too. Herein lies the controversy. Did Danny Hester deserve to win this show and beat Arash Rabar? I say no. I say as much as I like Danny's physique and I like him as a person, I felt that Arash Rabar brought everything he needed to bring, conditioning, size, shape, to this division that really dominated the lineup. He was a lot bigger than Danny Hester. I felt his posing was good. He, every little detail he had uh, ad he administered to. He didn't leave anything un untold. And I, and I feel that, you know, I don't know how close it was on the scorecards uh, because, you know, you could win by a hair and every judge can still, can still see it unanimously. But I heard it was very close, the decision. And it probably came down to West Coast versus East Coast. Arash being from the East Coast, Danny being from the West Coast, the judges kind of being split. Uh, a lot of people were not happy with the decision. There was a lot of booing out there, which is a shame because, you know, everyone worked their ass off. It's no one's fault that Danny was awarded first. It certainly wasn't Danny's uh, fault. But you know what? 
the feel good win does come seeing Danny up there. I think Danny's in his forties. I don't even know how old he is. He might be. I think he's forty six or something like that, or might be close to my age at forty eight. To see this guy come in here and win that Olympia is was a great you know type of thing for me to see because it's like, hey, us older guys can still do it. However, I'm a realist and I'm a, I'm about calling it as I see it. And to me, Arash had more to offer on that stage than did Han uh, and did. Uh, Danny Hester. So I didn't I wasn't in agreement with that decision. I thought it was close though. So, you know, I'm not blown away by it, but I felt bad for Arash because I thought that was a, a direct opportunity for him to win this event. Now, the real controversy came in the third position. Sadiq Hodzevic, who a lot of people believed did not deserve to be there because he did not qualify for this event. Uh, and I don't agree with that decision. I think he did deserve to be there with the special invite. Uh, they felt he was too small. Uh, his legs were not big enough. Some people said he was in condition. I'll, I'm going to go on record and say, number one, Sadiq was very well conditioned. His conditioning was good. His posing is excellent. He poses his body and makes himself better than he really is. What I had a problem with was his leg development. I felt that from the front, they looked pretty good. From behind, they just weren't. They were lacking density and thickness. He is a taller competitor. He looked lanky to me. And if you watch those double bicep shots, you can see that there's some density missing. Now, uh, I've seen other sites like uh, Louis Marco's YouTube channel and a couple other guys putting up pictures comparing Sadiq to, uh, to some of these other guys like Terrence Ruffin or Breon Ansley. And they're, they're basically taking two individual shots and putting them together, which is not an accurate depiction because, number one, Sadiq is a lot taller than these guys and has a way bigger structure. You can't just put two pictures next to each other. you got to put the comparison pictures next to each other to get a true idea. Alone, Sadiq looks small. In the comparisons, he holds his own pretty good. Did he deserve third in my mind? No. I thought he should have been definitely below probably Breon Ansley, who finished in the fourth position, and I felt he should have been below Darren Charles, who was fifth. I would have had no problem with Sadiq fit, fitting into that sixth position, although you know some people felt that Terrence Ruffin got a poor placing, but we're going to get to him in a minute. Let's go back to Sadiq, okay? He is a good poser. Once they put him into that top four callout, he definitely held his own up there. But once again, Breon Ansley in fourth is so good from behind. If, you, if Johnny puts a picture up there, he's, he's better than everyone from behind. He's better than Arash. He's better than Danny Hester. He's got crazy, crazy density, and he's got crazy conditioning back there. Obviously, shows are not just one from behind. So you can't just give it to Terrence Ruffin because he's better from behind. Okay, from the front, he doesn't necessarily beat these other guys. And if you look, even this, this front shot that's up there, Sadiq looks better than him in this ab thigh shot, okay, because he's got a bigger structure. Um, Actually, there it is. There it is. The Sadiq shot. Sorry, uh, but Arash obviously is better than him too in the in the front shots. But you turn him around, and Breon Ansley is uh, excuse me, Terrence Ruffin, excuse me, Breon Ansley is very dominant up there. And I think that people look at at one or two poses and they say, well, why didn't this guy win? And you have to take the whole physique. Just because a guy wins two or three poses doesn't mean he's the best physique up there. So. I would agree with the fact that uh, Arash was up there in that first position, uh, second, first, second position. Danny Hester certainly deserved to be somewhere in the top four. I'm not going to say he should have been first or second because I don't necessarily know if I agree with that statement. Um, I don't think that Sadiq should have been in the top three. I, I probably would have scored it, okay, if you're asking me my personal opinion, I would have scored it Arash or Bar first. I would have put um, in second Breon Ansley. I would have probably put in third Danny Hester. I could give him third on that. With fourth place probably going to Darren Charles. Uh, fifth place going to who do I leave out? Um, I, I, I don't know who I left out. But I would definitely have Sadiq in that fifth or sixth position. So was Sadiq terrible? No. People made it out that he, oh, this guy doesn't belong up there. He was certainly his top six physique. Does his legs need to come up? Absolutely. Does his back need to come up? Absolutely. This guy just started doing classic physique. He was 
purposely downsizing to keep his frame small so that he wouldn't outgrow the men's physique division. So in one year, it's pretty hard to make the kind of – he put 20 pounds on. If the guy gains another 10 or 12 pounds by next year, he's going to be damn dangerous. The problem is can he make the weight because he's at the weight limit already, and that's going to be a uh, defining moment for Sadiq. If he can't make the weight and he puts that muscle on, does he try to move up to the open class? Can he compete with these guys? Can he do it in one year? Does he need to take two years off? Does he want to get that big? I think he does. I think he does, and I think he can compete. He's got a good structure. I don't know how much muscle he could add to that frame, but I think it'll look good if he does do it. I think Breon Ansley is going to be one of the guys to look out for in this division. I think also that Arash Rabar will be one of the guys to look out for. I don't think that Danny Hester at his age is going to be around too long. He might win one or two Olympias if, if they allow him to. But I think he'll be gone after that, and I don't think he—I don't think he wants to hang around that long. Although he did say when I interviewed him, "I could do this forever. This is easy." Uh, I don't think it's easy. I think you can just start seeing some freaks. Now let's talk about Terence Ruffin, who, when he first came out, okay, and I was doing the critiques of the individual posing, I said right off the bat, "This guy could win the show." That's when he was standing alone. When I saw him in the lineup, however, he's a small guy. I think he's only 22 years old. He might have been the youngest guy in the entire lineup. Here's a guy who can will be a dangerous threat in classic physique for years to come. But standing with the other competitors, he looked small, and he lost some of the wow factor that he has when he's alone. Now, if you look at the pictures of him alone, you're like, this guy definitely should have won the show. But then you put him in the lineup, and unfortunately, I don't think we have any comparisons where he's actually in the lineup against these guys because he was not in the first callout. You really don't get a good idea. But this guy, if he puts a little size on, is super dangerous in this division. And I think Arash Rabar, and I think Breon Ansley, and, and, and the younger guys that are competing in Sadiq got to be very worried about this guy. He is certainly the dark horse in the lineup. He's the most dangerous guy in the lineup as well. Uh, I'm sure Darren Charles will probably do this division for another couple of years because he just loves competing. But I don't, I don't think he's going to win the Olympia. You know, I know that's his goal. He'll win pro shows, but will he win the Olympia? I don't think so. I think that Breon Ansley's got a good shot. I think Terrence Ruffin in the future's got a good shot. Arash Rabar is, to me, waiting in the, in the wings for Danny Hester to walk away or at least get, you know, to move out of first place, you know, in the judges' minds. So that's it in a nutshell. You know, a lot of people critiqued Sadiq very harshly. You know, they didn't, I think they didn't like the fact that he didn't qualify and they had a sour taste in their mouth and they tried to say, oh, this guy isn't in shape. He's got no legs. He doesn't deserve to be up there. He absolutely deserved to be up there and he absolutely deserved to be in that top six. I'm not saying he should have been where he was. I probably would have had him in the sixth position. And Danny Hester will be a great champion and ambassador to the sport for the next year. Will he remain in power? Next year, I don't think so. I think that I think Arash Rabar is, unless he doesn't get unless he gets hurt in some way severely, I think we're going to see him as the next Olympia champ. But Breon Ansley is right on his heels. I, I promise you that he will be in the top three next year. Hopefully, they will move Classic Physique to the main stage at the Orleans Arena next year because it is bodybuilding. If you got the two twelve and you got the open there, put the Classic Physique there. We want to see these guys posing under the best lighting possible. Please, guys, over at the uh, AMI Flex, the guys who run the Olympia, think about it. Classic physique on the Orleans main stage. We want it next year. We demand it. Uh, I'm Dave Palumbo with my classic physique analysis of the 2016 Mr. Olympia.